Is your doctor checking all the lab work that should be checked at your annual visit? This is a very good question that you should be asking because many doctors order the bare minimum and they don't check enough things to ensure that you're truly healthy. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the labs that I recommend and a little bit about why I recommend them. Uh, welcome back all you 2.3 million subscribers. Oh, you're not a subscriber? There's a little button down there below that fixes that. Let's talk about your lab work. Keep in mind, this list is the list that you get checked if you feel fine, okay? If you have any particular symptom, then that needs to be investigated more thoroughly. So if you have severe fatigue, severe insomnia, uh, a specific pain or ache or symptom, then that needs to be investigated more thoroughly. This lab panel is just for people who feel pretty good most days, don't really seem to be suffering from any disease, uh, seem to be fairly healthy. Even in that state, you need this full panel checked at least once a year, starting probably about the age of 30 because metabolic disease is so common in modern society. Metabolic disease and chronic inappropriate inflammation are so common in modern society that you can no longer trust your doctor just to order the bare minimum lab work at your annual exam or your checkup and think that you've gotten a good enough picture of your overall health from that tiny amount of lab work. Now, the average doctor uh, at a once a year routine checkup is gonna order a set of labs like a basic metabolic panel, a CBC, a lipid panel, a urinalysis, maybe or maybe not a TSH, and that's it. And so this gives you a bare minimum look at your fasting glucose, your kidney function, your electrolytes, your complete blood cell count, whether there's any gross sign of inf in infection or inflammation, uh, it does give you a look at your triglycerides and your HDL cholesterol on the lipid panel, but your doc probably wants to focus mainly on the LDL and total cholesterol. And then the urinalysis is going to give a look at the urine microscopically. It gives us a bunch of information, but this set of tests is just not enough. And so I'm going to show you this list of lab tests that I want you to ask for. Every time your doctor draws blood work, at least once a year, and I'm going to tell you, go through these and tell you why you need each one of these, okay? Now, this is actually from page 16 of the book that Kim Howerton and I wrote called Common Sense Labs. There's a link down below if you're interested in that. So the first lab up is a hemoglobin A1C. And so you can have a normal fasting blood sugar on your labs, but still be pre-diabetic or type two diabetic. And a hemoglobin A1C is going to immediately uncover if you are pre-diabetic or, or ty have type two diabetes, because you may have no symptoms. This happens sometimes. You may have a normal fasting blood sugar, and without this test, your doctor is blind to the fact that you have pre-diabetes, which is a risk factor. Damage is being done. If you have type two diabetes, Obviously, you know damage is being done to every organ in your body. The next test is a complete metabolic panel. So you don't want a BMP, you want a CMP. In addition to what the BMP checks for, which is fasting blood sugar, electrolytes, and kidney function, this also checks your liver function as well. So always say, hey, don't do a BMP, do a CMP. Next is a complete blood count, uh, cell count with differential with differential because this can help tease out some other things. The next is a C-peptide. C-peptide is an excellent proxy marker for how much insulin your pancreas is having to make to deal with the amount of carbohydrates you're currently eating. And so if your C-peptide is elevated, even though you have a normal fasting blood sugar and a normal A1C, you have early type two diabetes. Okay, and so this is an excellent test to uncover that sometimes up to 10 years before you even uh, your A1C even starts to elevate. The next is a vitamin D25. Many doctors will mistakenly order a vitamin D125, but you want the vitamin D25 level. This is going to tell you if you're getting enough vitamin D from the sun and in your diet. Next is a DHEAS. This is an excellent test to kind of look at your overall adrenal gland health. 
And then other tests in this panel also help with that as well. Next is an ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. This is a very rough marker for chronic inappropriate inflammation in your body. The next is a ferritin level intimately related to hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. If it's elevated, it doesn't mean you have iron overload. It means that there's something going on with either infection, inflammation, or hyperinsulinemia. Next is a fasting insulin. Now you don't have to get a fasting insulin and a C-peptide. Uh, you can get by with just one, but I like ordering both. They're very inexpensive. But a fasting insulin is gonna tell you, is your pancreas having to secrete too much insulin to deal with the amount of carbohydrates that you're currently eating in your diet. And if your fasting insulin is high, that's absolutely a marker for metabolic syndrome and early, early type two diabetes. Next is a GGT. Now, a lot of docs think this is just a liver test, but actually the liver, the biliary system, including the gallbladder, the pancreas, and the kidneys, the cells in those organs, all contain GGT. So if there's any damage being done to any of those body organs, your GGT is gonna be elevated. And so many, many things can cause your GGT to be elevated, including taking too many anti-inflammatories, too much Tylenol, or drinking too much alcohol. But it's an, it, it kind of takes the place of the old test, alkaline phosphatase. Some docs still like to order that one, but this one is a little more specific to these organ systems. And if it's elevated, your doc needs to do a, a further investigation to figure out why. The next test is a homocysteine level. This is an excellent indicator of B12 status, but also overall inflammation in your body. Uh, excellent test. If it's elevated, that needs to be investigated. Next is a high sensitivity CRP. And again, another kind of dashboard uh, light that if it's elevated, there is either inflammation or infection somewhere in your body that needs to be investigated. Next is the lipid panel, and you'll wanna focus on the triglycerides and the HDL cholesterol. You want both of those to be normal. If either one of those is abnormal, then there's a problem with your diet. Now, your doctor may wanna really focus on the total cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol. I've got other videos on this channel to help you understand why that's an inappropriate focus on a lab test that really doesn't tell you anything at all. Next is a magnesium level and a phosphorus level. And this just gives you an indication of what your serum, magnesium, and phosphorus are. There's a long list of medical conditions and medications and supplements and dietary mistakes that can cause your serum magnesium or your serum phosphorus to be off. Now, just because both of these test results are within the normal range does not mean that you have plenty of magnesium or phosphorus in your body. You can be quite depleted and the serum magnesium and phosphorus still be within normal limits. Next is a TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. This is a hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. And this is just a snapshot, quick look at your thyroid function, just to make sure that it looks like everything's functioning okay. Now, if you have low thyroid symptoms or you have an abnormal TSH, then you need the full thyroid panel that I talk about in other videos. And then finally, the urinalysis. It looks for invisible amounts of microscopic blood, it looks for ketones. I hope you have a few ketones in your blood. It looks for many other things, many other signs of infection, inflammation, or damage within the body. Now in this video, I've just given you the bare minimum information about this panel of labs. If you'd like to dig into this deeper and find out more information about each one of these labs, and also not just what's the normal range, but what's the optimal range. If it ha what, where do I want my fasting insulin to be to be absolutely metabolically healthy? If you want that kind of extra information, you'll find it in Common Sense Labs. There's a link down below. Hope this video helps. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.